feel the same. Don't make this to you. All righty. Well, welcome everyone. Um, Michelle, it's been a while, so you might not know, but we've. Uh, so I'll just introduce uh, Rhonda. We've teamed up with uh, Black History Manitoba Celebration Committee. Did I get the name right? Yeah. So she's here uh, with that and uh, and they have lent us their Zoom account. So we're not under a, a 40 minute time limit. So we'll have, we'll have lots of time to uh, talk about what we're learning from each other. Thank uh, you so much for that. Yeah. Oh, our pleasure. Absolutely. <laughs> so someone's gonna win one of these. We've got one left. So uh, Cindy Gilroy bought uh, a few of these uh, to support uh, Black History Manitoba Celebration. And uh, let's uh, highlight some uh, Black inventors. So, so we've got one of these left. Again. And uh, everyone, um, consolation prize, everybody gets uh, gets one of these, which are pretty cool. It's the a little, uh, little monster planner. So nice. a little calendar inside. And, uh, with some little history stuff on the front there. So, and that's from them as well. <laughs> so thank you. Um, so everybody um, logged into CrowdPer and entered the code 98K. Yep, because it's over on the left. Okay, so I guess we're three, ready oh. to start. So what, what happens, Rhonda, is uh, Jen's going to ask a question. And then we've got five minutes to search the internet and find the answer. So you might have to jump around between tabs. And then you, you click on the uh, answer you think is right. Uh, the quicker you answer, the more points you get, but there's enough time that you've got time to find the right answer and still get some points. Um, last week, Barb um, didn't win, but she got most of the questions right. So that was uh, good, good on her. I don't think she can hear us, but she's, uh, she's gonna be doing it on her phone, but she's not in the Zoom because of uh, lending a computer to her kid. <laughs> All right. Okay, I think we might have some members doing the same thing. They might be on their phones, but maybe yeah. didn't have the, the Zoom registration. So cool. sounds good. Oh, hey, there's more people. <laughs> I got to make the screen bigger. There's Andrea. She's there. Yeah. And uh... <laughs> okay, ready? Yes, we're ready. Ready, set, go. Here we go. Um, well, oh, there's your screen. Who was the first recorded free black person to arrive on the territory of today's Canada? Olivier Lejeune, Mathieu de Costa, a translator with the Champlain expedition who arrived sometime between 1603 and 1608, Solomon Mosby or William Nielsen Hall. Are you playing, Michael? Oh, you're not. Jen, do you know how many responses? Uh, well, it says there are seven people playing. Okay. Um, 
and we've got four votes so far. Yeah. You you won't get seven because uh, I'm logged in uh, on that other computer there. Um, oh, okay, so six. Then. Yeah. So for anyone that's uh, struggling, I'll, I'll sh give a little hint. Um, if you copy this, which is kind of hard to do from your phone, but if you if you search Google for the question, oh, come on. <laughs> copy, there we go. If you search Google for, for the question, it sort of tends to take you to the answer. Okay, so here's, uh, here's what might be the answer. All I did is Google search the question, but uh, we could read a little bit more more about this uh, this gentleman here. You know, so that that might be. Good hint. <laughs> One minute remaining. Ooh. We'll help you with that uh, NDTBHM. <laughs> is that Nadia from Black History Manitoba? <laughs> yeah, okay. Mm. So what you have to do is, um, go to the link that I'll put in the chat because uh, now that we started the game, it's not there uh, in the intro. Um, and then you'll be able to answer. Maybe not right away, but for the, for the next, you won't get it in 19 seconds, but. Uh, okay. I'll get you that link shortly, uh, Natty. I'm struggling with the, the tech here. All right, so I think the right answer is B. <laughs> Jen, do you want to show us uh, the responses? Or? Uh, I'm, I'm struggling with my mouse. Yeah. Okay, so the correct answer was B. Everyone who answered answered correctly. Way to go, everyone. So we wanted to do a whole quiz on this gentleman, but there really isn't anything that's really known about him. You know, so uh, I don't really have a lot to tell you about him, but did anyone find, any, find out anything that's interesting? Yeah. On the Wikipedia page, uh, there's something in the footnotes that says there, there is something about this gentleman in this book here. Um, so I got it. It's, uh, I borrowed it from the library. I had to get an account with the, MCC library. Um, Human Rights Museum has a copy as well, but you can't go in there and borrow it. You can do an interlibrary loan. And there, there's nothing in here either, but this is uh, something interesting I'm gonna get into. All right, um, wanna hit the next question while I get the link for Nadia? Certainly. Okay, I'm gonna disappear for a sec. Zoop, zoop. Question two. Who was the first recorded slave purchased in New France? We don't know his real name, but a Jesuit priest baptized him as Olivier Lejeune in 1632. Viola Desmond, Solomon Mosby, or Harriet Tubman?
Okay, the correct answer was A. Everyone who answered, answered correctly. Can you show us the standings? Sure can. Okay, let me see here. So you'll be able to see it on your phone or whatever you're using to play. Jen's gonna reveal who's, who's in the lead. Ooh, it's a tight race. <laughs> Okay. So did anyone find anything interesting about uh, Olivia Dejou that they'd like to share? Uh, well, I, I found it uh, interesting that we don't know his real name. Uh, they recorded the name he was baptized to and he had to pick a name when he was baptized and he picked uh, you know, the priest and he picked uh, the first name of a clerk and mixed them together. But that, that isn't his name. He had a name in Africa that uh, nobody knows except him. Um, and I didn't re learn this on Wikipedia, but in that, uh, that book, again, uh, he, um, 
he died as a free black man. So he was freed sometime before he, he died. And he, was, he had a really short life. He died in, in his 30s. But actually, that was kind of a long life uh, for, for back then. So I actually wow. found it interesting of the wrong answer for number. I knew B and D was wrong. But C, I didn't know the person's name, so I looked him up. And actually, in 1837, he's a slave owner from Kentucky that came to Niagara um, demanding the arrest of his slaves who mm -hmm. had escaped. So that was actually something I did not know. Mm -hmm. uh, who was that again, Ned? Uh, Solomon Mosby. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna cover that a little later on. I, I picked some of those names out of the out of a long list that we're working our way through. So cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she might have given away an answer. <laughs> it's okay. We're all here to learn, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so we have a now. Time. It's okay. <clears throat> okay, question three. Who formed the majority of the forced labor force in New France? enslaved African slaves who'd come to the new world across the Middle Passage, enslaved Asians from the French colonies in Tonkin and Annam, present day Vietnam, the enslaved indigenous population that formed the majority of the forced labor force in New France, or none of the above. Jen, can you award Barb extra points? 
she had, she had Zoom open on her phone and she was clicking on the meeting. Click, click, click. And she had to come downstairs to answer so I could switch tabs for her. <laughs> What a night. She got 21 points, but she deserves more. I nearly asked her right away, and I was like, stop, work, darn it. One of us always has some tech struggle every game. <laughs> yeah. I got too much I did that for this question, and then I hit it, the wrong answer on my phone. Well, it's because it was looking like your screen. It looked like the Zoom call thing, and I was like, click, click, click. It's very deceiving. <laughs> okay. Oh, Amazon's out. Cool. I won't be able to look up anything now. I'll just be guessing completely, 100%. OK. <laughs> 14 seconds left. Uh, Michelle, you can get the book from the Winnipeg Public Library, but it would have to be uh, interlibrary loan uh, from the Human Rights Museum because they have a copy. But, uh, oh, okay. Into the public, but, uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. The correct answer was C, the enslaved indigenous population that formed the majority of the forced labor force in New France. Hmm. Not everyone answered correctly. Let's check the standings. I'm gonna suck. I'm gonna be at the end here. Ta -da. Ta -da. <laughs> Would anyone like information on why the indigenous populations were considered slaves? Yes, please. <clears throat> okay, so um, it was kind of sneaky the way that the European and French settlers um, did this. They actually used it as like, if you help us with the land and making, you know, houses and homes and, and whatnot, we will help you. And so indigenous people back then were forced into um, slavery because one, they didn't speak a lick of English or French at the time. So it's kind of like how the treaties were signed in the different numbered treaties. They had translators and not even, not all the translators were very kind, honest people. So when um, New France began to colonize and become um, this new part of what we now call Canada, they tricked a lot of the indigenous people into, um, we'll give you houses, we'll give you supplies. Ammunition was number one, was the big thing, right? Introducing this new technology to indigenous people. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of trickery, um, what happened with indigenous um, people becoming slaves back then. Wow. wow. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Where is my, okay, here we go. Question four. Whoa. Question four. Sorry. <laughs> Approximately how many of the 3.8 million slaves who had been transported from Western Africa ended up in New France? Only about 1,400 about 20,000, about 50,000, or around 100,000? And another fun fact while I'm in there, um, if I may, yes. um, a lot of the uh, black slaves that came to Canada, um, once they were freed, um, indigenous tribes and communities invited them in and they became friends and, and like community members because they saw the similarities um, that they have with, with treatment. So the relationship between um, uh, black newcomers and indigenous people in Canada has always been incredibly tight because they were able to see the disparities between the two. And um, they helped each other cultivate the land and they also traded with each other and also taught them different new skills. So it's, it's really interesting how our history as indigenous people goes back to um, black newcomers um, to New France. So it's, 
that, you know, and I wish we were taught that in school because I didn't know that until I was much older, um, just like, you know, indigenous history and even black history in Canada too. I'm still learning about black history in Canada, which should have been taught, you know, back when I was in school. So just to learn all of this, it just blows my mind. And I don't know, it just, it gives me like this really happy feeling inside that, you know, my ancestors, because I, I come from, um, the, the, my first indigenous ancestors were Iroquois. And just to know that that community helped black newcomers become acclimated to the land and became friends is just, it's incredible. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, that connection because uh, we definitely hear about that definitely when we're having the conversations now and definitely when we're looking at police reform and community community engagement um, we've had a lot of connectivity between the black mm -hmm. and indigenous community here in Winnipeg and we've definitely heard the the similarities in the history and and it's I'm glad that you you were able to to share that it, it truly did go back hundreds of years, right? Yes. So thank, yeah. thank you very much for sharing that and confirming. Oh, you're that. welcome. Adding my thanks. <laughs> I was this old when I learned that, like tonight. There you go. <laughs> I think we're that many old as well, learning about, you know, the truth about history, right? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're all learning and and, yeah. and this type of platform is, is amazing for that. Oh, absolutely. Jen, I have to say, I know you're wearing a tube, but sometimes when you're zoomed in, it looks like you're wearing a headband from the 80s. I <laughs> like you're ready to do I... some like, some like jazzercise or something with Jane Fonda. For anyone who chooses to stay after the trivia game, we can do some aerobics. <laughs> Let me go get my thigh master. <laughs> 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 I have no idea where I'm storing my unitard right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ill prepared. <laughs> it's like that pink dress that they said was, was it pink or was it blue? Because now that you've mentioned that it's a hat, I'm now seeing hat, but the whole time I thought it was a headband as well. <laughs> Now I can't unsee, I, I can't unsee the headband, but <laughs> I'm identifying now that it's bad. <laughs> this is it's just the way that the colors lined up. And it was yeah, matching yeah. the background. It was matching the wall. <laughs> there's, also, there's a mirror back there too. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's a very lovely tube, Jen. I like it. Thank you. I bought it at a thrift store for $2. Oh. It is so cute. Isn't that always awesome? Yes, I love it. Clearly handmade. Yeah. And it's perfect for the pending weather that's about to come our way. Yes. The fourth installment of winter. Well, we're out of time if anyone- We are out of time. Still, still um, the correct answer was only about 1400. We will move on to question five. Mm -hmm. In 1685, what royal edict outlined the rights and obligations of both slaves and their owners in the French colonies? The Edict of Fontainebleau, the Edict of Nantes, the Mikuli Ain or Law of the Realm, the Code Noir or Black Code, a decree passed by the French King Louis XIV.
This is royalty free music so youtube don't take our uh, take our videos down wonderful there's a whole uh, whole bunch of stuff you can download you have to go to youtube and mask them and they'll they'll tell you what's safe to use so i would never have thought of that yeah it's a thing if you if you upload something to youtube and someone's playing the radio in the background they'll like take you down so they've got things that automatically scan it and, and mm -hmm. listen to the recordings less than a minute it's getting back to hats uh this is definitely a real hat and it's staying on until <laughs> until i get a haircut it's been on for, for most of the pandemic <laughs> so that's my reason for the toque as well yeah <laughs> I don't know what to do. I haven't had this much hair in 30 years. I don't, I don't know what you, to do with it. You might need it longer, Mike, if we go into a third, well, into a deeper third wave with more restrictions. Just shave your head, Jen. I did that in July. I oh, stopped, you did? I stopped shaving my head in July. Oh, OK. And so all I've got is what's grown since then, so. Although I'm frustrated enough, I might actually do that again. I'm not sure. Three, two, one, zero. The correct answer was D, the Code Noir or Black Code, a decree passed by the French King Louis XIV. Did anyone uh, learn anything they'd like to share besides me? Go ahead. Well, I don't want to talk over our lovely ladies. <laughs> Well, um, this wasn't in Wikipedia. It was in that uh, in that book again. But uh, until they passed, until this decree was decreed, um, that was the decree that made slavery illegal. So until then, it was illegal. But not that that mattered to the people who enslaving people. But uh, I, I found that interesting. I find this interesting. <laughs> Andrea. <laughs> Look at how close that is. Mm -hmm. Crazy. All right, question six. Which of the following code noir obligations applied to slave owners? 
never to mutilate, kill, or torture slaves, to feed, clothe, and care for sick and aging slaves, to accept responsibility for slaves' actions, or all of the above. So while you're all Googling, I'll just remind you, everybody gets uh, one of these. So make sure sometime during the evening, not when you're frantically Googling and trying to get 60, 59, 58, 57 points, but sometime tonight, just DM me your address so I can drop this off. It's a little um, uh, calendar uh, for 2021 that you, lets you plan your life. And it's got some history stuff in there as well. It's from Black History Manitoba Celebration Committee. And uh, the winner, which is looking like Andrea, but it's close, <laughs> uh, gets, uh, gets one of these wonderful t-shirts. So we've got one left. Uh, Cindy Gilroy, my, um, my counselor for, for my ward, Daniel McIntyre, she bought uh, a bunch of these from Black, to support uh, Black History Manitoba Celebration Committee. So we get to give away our last one tonight. I have my hopes up. <laughs> my youngest is currently sitting on the Council for Anti-Racism in the school. It'd be a great shirt to wear. <laughs> what? Perfect. We're recording, uh, so I'm curious which school, but you probably might not want to say so. Oh, uh, it's fine. It's Grand Park High School. They just Grand did Park? a whole thing for Black History Month too. That was really phenomenal. They did a great job. So, uh, and they were involved in that as well. well. Good on them. I was in on that event. It was very, very well put together. So, send kudos to them. Yeah. Oh, yes no. They yeah, were absolutely. So good the way that it turned out. So it's good. <laughs> It was great. Hmm. Nope, you got it right, Barb. <laughs> I thought I did, but yeah. then I started to doubt myself. Or my memory's bad. I wrote, I set the quiz up two weeks ago. So. Mm. Does everybody need more time? Are we? Um, do... Okay. People need more time. That's good. <laughs> Thirty seconds. Although historically we've been getting, it says there are nine people participating, but we've been getting five votes. So to to me it looks like everyone's voted, but I don't want to cut ever, anyone off either. Okay, correct answer was D, all of the above.
No, based yeah, on it, policy. It looks like there are only five yeah. participating. Okay. We'll shut that off and move to question seven. The first participating. Yes, you just showed your score. Which of the following were denied to slaves under Code Mar? Ownership of land, legal standing to make contracts, legal standing to testify, or all of the above? Okay, we have five votes from five participants. Woohoo! <laughs> Everyone answered correctly, too. All right. Huzzah. Uh, unless anyone has anything to contribute, we can move along to question eight. Why did Marquis de Denonville petitioned Louis XIV in 1688 for permission to import African slaves into New France to impress Catherine Cretin, who he would later marry. He wanted to model his colonial economy after those from France's slave-based Caribbean colonies. In anticipation, changes the U.S. slave market in response to the 1688 Germantown Quaker petition against slavery or he thought Louis XIV would be sympathetic to his request due to the events in England at the time. Hmm, interesting. supposed to be for everyone in the chat not just you Mike <laughs> so I put in the chat that um, parts of code noir were actually used in the formation of the Indian Act of 1876 really? so with uh, the uh, legal rights and the land so indigenous people when the Indian Act was created they weren't allowed to have any legal rights whatsoever they had no land. Um, they were all forced to federal land. Um, so that was something that I actually learned about in, um, took a history course at the University of Manitoba. And 
my professor mentioned that, that the Code Noir uh, was, parts of it was taken to form uh, the Indian Act and also to the treaties as well. Okay, we have five votes. Uh, the correct answer was B. He wanted to model his colonial economy after those from France's slave-based Caribbean colonies. Mm -hmm. Something to add? Yeah, please. He had mines that uh, needed workers. And, uh, yeah. Okay, I didn't, I didn't check. Is, is nine the lightning round? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Hold on, let's find out. Because you don't want to start that too early. So no one no, knows. It because um, we're, we're at the last question and yeah. historically it's... Oh, I got something else to add about uh, Denimville as well. Okay. Uh, Michelle mentioned that uh, the, the French were enslaving um, you know, indigenous people as well. He actually tricked a bunch of the chiefs into, by trickery into coming to meet with them. Uh, and then he kidnapped them all and shipped them to France. <laughs> and then the... And, and then um, the tribes without their chiefs got together and they burned down a town called uh, Le Champ in Montreal, which is where I lived when I lived in Montreal for uh, a couple of years in the 80s. I, I picked a place in Le Champ and I uh, had no idea that <laughs> this was the place that was burned to the ground before uh, yeah. Yeah, it became the city. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> by, by trickery. Like they just... Oh, oh yeah. Well, yeah. Now you're slaves, and we're shipping, we're kidnapping you and shipping you to Europe. Yeah. There was yeah. um this documentary I was watching. I don't know what channel it was on, but they were talking about that because there were some um, people in England and in France who had indigenous ancestry, and they couldn't figure out like their all their families lived in France and England at the time, and they were like, "How did we get indigenous ancestry?" And it was because of that. And also, too, if you keep going further, um, Indigenous women were also shipped overseas as well to fulfill the needs of the, the kingdoms over there, too. On a less, uh, on a trivial note, nine, yes, nine is the lightning round. So, Jen, why don't you tell them what's coming before you hit, hit next so they know what to do? Okay, so the final question, the lightning round, is one minute, right? Just one minute. Um, but it won't take you a minute. <laughs> uh, you need to answer as quickly as possible. Go with your gut. More points for quicker answers, obviously, and if they're correct, even better. Um, okay, here we go. Three, two, one, question nine. Don't even Google. Don't wait for Jen to read it. Nope. With your gut, it's double the points and it's coming down quick. Oh, it is double the points. 150, 140. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> How did Louis the 14th respond? He said he would provide it. Uh, it was working. easy. Oh my God. It was easy? Yes. <laughs> Everyone got it right. He granted permission to begin the import of black slaves in May 1689. Winks. <laughs> Do you have a royalty free drum roll? Okay, royalty free drum roll. Who's the winner? Barb. Dre. Usually the lead changes in the lightning round. It's a big thing. So, Dre, you. Barb. Uh, at the end, probably. No, Barb pulled ahead of uh, Nadia at the very end. Whoa, whoa, tight race, especially the midfield. My goodness, a lot, a lot of changes in the end. Congratulations, Andrea. You'll look good in this. You can rock it 